Welcome to Splitgate, the game that's basically Halo with portals and portals and portals and portals and portals and portals and portals and, portals and genuinely, I love this game. I have had a quake-sized hole in my heart for as long as I can remember, and Splitgate patches that hole up just enough for me to be very satisfied. Splitgate is a first-person, movement-based shooter developed by 1047 Games, and I have no fucking clue when it was released, but it's popular now, that's all that matters. I just love the concept of using portals in a competitive shooter game, and using them for movement like you do in Portal, and it's just... I it, love it. I originally saw this game on TikTok and thought it was going to be one of those crappy sponsored games, but genuinely, so much fun. Well now the only thing to do is go record footage. Oh. Yeah. I know the developers are really trying to increase server capacity to bring down that queue time, but it is definitely something that scares off a lot of new players. The first time I played this game, I had a three hour queue time until I got in, but waiting those three hours was so worth it. But thankfully, as of recently, they've been able to lower that queue time down to 20 minutes average, and sometimes it even goes down to just like one minute. Once you get through that queue time, you can finally start playing with its wonderful selection of weapons. Speaking of... Splitgate's arsenal of weapons is very simple, but it is amazing nonetheless. In most game modes, you will find yourself with the carbine and the assault rifle. The carbine being your basic semi-automatic rifle, and your assault rifle being your fully automatic one. These weapons are the bread and butter of the game, so you better get good at them, because you're going to be using them a lot. Unless you're playing competitive, then the pistol replaces the assault rifle as your secondary to the carbine, and it's, it's alright, it's really nothing too special, it's a pistol. Then we have the battle rifle. It's basically if you told the carbine and the assault rifle that they needed to have a baby. The battle rifle fires in bursts, allowing you to have the damage output of the AR, but the accuracy of the carbine. It is a ton of fun to use, and it is one of the most common pickups on maps. The sniper is pretty straightforward, it's a two-shot body shot, one-shot headshot weapon, and it's, it's overall not too bad. The SMG is your close range alternative to the AR, being fully automatic and being able to do great damage output at close range, but at anything that isn't close range, it's basically worthless. And then we have the shotgun, my favorite weapon in the game. It does amazing damage at close range, but anything more than that, it is worthless. Those are just your basic weapons, and there's a couple more that are a lot cooler. Your rocket launcher, blow shit up, and if you get it, you're gonna, you're gonna do some damage. It's a good weapon. And for those wondering if you could rocket jump with it, you cannot. The railgun is a ton of fun. You have to charge the shot before you shoot it, but it shoots this piercing beam that just kills anything it touches. The plasma rifle is a fully automatic, projectile-based weapon that if you can use well, it is so rewarding and so much fun. And then we have the BFB, the big, friendly bat. This thing is so much fun to use. I love this weapon with all of my heart. Just the thought of seeing this guy in huge armor being chased down with a baseball bat is the funniest thing to me. <laughs> and I mean, the oddball shouldn't really count, but... And along with this wonderful arsenal of weapons, each weapon has its own great array of skins. I know that word's gonna scare some of you, but I'm gonna talk about it anyways. There is a skin shop, but you really don't have to worry about that because that's just its own thing and you don't even have to touch it if you don't want to. You can also unlock drops for playing the game that I don't even think you can pay for if you wanted to. And on top of that, each weapon has its own set of challenges for you to do that you can do to unlock free skins. And if you complete all of the challenges of a certain weapon, you unlock the golden skin, which honestly looks a lot nicer than most of the other skins. And at the time of recording this video, I am one thing away from unlocking the golden shotgun skin. How? I just don't understand how I'm supposed to shoot two people with one. No one stands that close together. And it's not like these skins look bad, a lot of the skins that you unlock doing these challenges actually look really nice. And now that we have all these wonderful weapons, we're gonna need some game modes to play with them in. Splitgate has a ton of different game modes, and it is great. But before I talk about them, I want to talk about this totally real statistic that says 0% of my viewers are subscribed, so if you think you're subscribed, you're probably not, and even if you're not subscribed, if you could go down and hit the button, it would really help me out a lot. Back to game modes. The first one being Team Deathmatch. It's your basic... Team Deathmatch. You start with the carbine and the assault rifle, and you can find various other weapons across the map in that arena, sort of quake arena gameplay style. 
VIP is a game mode where one player in your team is randomly selected to be the VIP, meaning that they get double the health, but they can't place portals. And by killing the enemy VIP, you can score a point for your team. Other than that, it plays just like Deathmatch. Team Oddball is a ton of fun. I briefly mentioned it earlier, and it's basically plays like Team Deathmatch as well, but the way of scoring points is by hanging on to the Oddball. Which is a one-hit melee kill, by the way. Um, so have fun with that. Team SWAT is just Team Deathmatch, except instead of the Carbine, you're given the Battle Rifle, and all headshots are insta-kills. Team Shoddy Snipers is the best game mode. It's just trickshotting bullshit. If you play this game mode seriously, you are playing it so incredibly wrong. Whenever I play this game mode, I just focus on hitting the most ridiculous shots possible. I never actually try. This game is made for crappy trick shots. And then we have Gun Game, which is your basic gun game arms race style game where basically getting a kill ups you another weapon, melee kill takes your enemy down another weapon. You've probably heard it a thousand times before. And now we get to the slightly more competitive game modes, which are Showdown and Takedown. The difference being Showdown gives you random loadouts, and if you get killed in Showdown, you're out for the round. Unlike in Takedown, where the loadout is the carbine and the pistol, and every time you die, your respawn counter gets longer until inevitably one team is completely wiped out. And for people who have played the game, they probably noticed that I left out two game modes. King of the Hill and Domination. I don't dislike these game modes because I'm bad at them, even though I am. I dislike them because I have genuine problems with them. King of the Hill and Domination are both control point based game modes in a movement shooter. This problem becomes increasingly obvious in King of the Hill when the entire team just doesn't move and camps the point. I feel like a big part of this game is the movement, and I just feel like these game modes break the playflow overall. It just doesn't feel right holding a control point in a game based around movement. Sure, there are still movement aspects to it, but a majority of the gameplay is just sitting on the point. The way I think this might be able to be fixed is if Control Point and King of the Hill had its own maps where each control point was a big open room and anywhere inside of it would count. But that could also cause problems with people hiding in corners and whatnot, but I think that down that alley would be a better way to go than to hide yourself in a small corridor. Either that, or I wish these game modes were part of the game mode rotation, rather than one of the permanent game modes. I will talk about the rotation game modes now. Every couple days, there's two rotational game modes that come up in-game. Some of my favorites being T-Bag Confirmed, which is just dog tags, except you have to T-Bag your enemy to get it. It's great. I love it. Free For All, which is just Team Deathmatch without the teams. And then Team Fiesta, which is just Team Deathmatch with randomized weapons, and it is complete chaos. I don't know about you, but I would much rather that in the main rotation in King of the Hill. Also, I love the devs' passive-aggressive hatred for Battle Royale mode. This is Bottomless Void and Club Silo labeled as the Battle Royale drop zone, and I just think that's hilarious. I'm so glad that this game isn't falling into the Battle Royale hell. But speaking of Club Silo, what do I think about the maps? Splitgate may not have a huge selection of maps, but they are very well done for a game still in beta. I don't outright hate any of the maps, but I do strongly dislike a few. First map being Impact, I have a very neutral opinion on this map. I don't really like or hate it more, it's just, it's just kind of there. I don't really play it enough to have developed a full opinion on it yet, so yeah. Oasis, this is one of the maps I strongly dislike, especially in the Shoddy Snipers game mode. This map is a camper's paradise. It is so incredibly open that you can see almost anywhere on the entire map from like one camping position. You get a camper to place a portal up on one of these funky like wall things and it's it's game over. They're just gonna sit there and they're going to shoot you from halfway across the map and you're never gonna know where they came from. Lava Well. This map, I don't really know. Every time I play this map I feel like I play poorly. I don't think I've found the way to properly utilize this map to its fullest potential yet. And again, I think I have a very neutral opinion on it, as I haven't quite got used to it yet. Abyss. I really like Abyss. I think its tight corridors and its large open middle section is a ton of fun, especially in Shoddy Sniper's game mode. And all the different pathways going across the middle just, yeah, I think it's a ton of fun. It is one of my favorite maps. Next we have Pantheon. I had no idea this map existed until I recorded this video. Um, and then I found out about it. And honestly, it's not that bad. It's a pretty neutral map. It is symmetrical, so... Next up we have Olympus. This map is very hit or miss depending on who you play with, because if you're playing with campers on the other team, this map is going to suck. But if you're playing with people that tend to move around, then this map can be a very, very enjoyable experience. Highwind is a ton of fun if you have the bat, and it is not fun at all if you have any other weapon. 
This map is so very close quarters that most weapons are just completely unviable. If you're going to play this map, just pray that you can get the bat before anyone else does. Club Silo is one of my favorite maps in the game. When I first played it, it was very confusing and I didn't understand it. But this map has a ton of verticality, which makes it great for portal jumping and hitting dumb trick shots. It's lovely. I love it. Then we have Stadium, arguably the best map in the game. It is very basic, it is symmetrical, and it just seems to be a loved map by everyone. It is a very basic map, great for beginners, but it's just complicated enough and has just enough little tricks for more experienced players to get a kick out of it as well. The community seems very divided on Atlantis, it's either you love it or you hate it. It is a series of larger rooms connected by small corridors, which is understandable why people don't like it. But genuinely, I think this is probably the ideal map to fix the problems that this game has with Domination and King of the Hill. It's got a fairly symmetrical layout, and there's also a cool little Spongebob easter egg off the side over there. And then we have Helix. I don't like this map. I get lost every time I play it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Hello, it is Editing Mesora here. I forgot to talk about Forgone Destruction and Crag because the website is outdated. Forgone Destruction is a great map. It feels like something just out of Quake or Unreal Tournament. It plays great, it's symmetrical, and is great for portal jumping. And then we have Crag. This map, when I first played it, I didn't like, but I think I've slowly begun to master it. Portal jumping on this map is a ton of fun. You can just go flying into the corridors, kill everyone in the room, and just leave. It is a great map. At first I was unsure, but I really like this map now. But anyways... Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I just want to say a couple things real quick. People keep asking me about the Ravenfield video. It will be out. I'm just probably going to do one more video before it, and then it will hopefully be out by the end of August, if not early September. Also, if you enjoy my content, I do stream games, including Splitgate, over on Twitch if you want to go check that out. It's a fun time, incredibly welcoming. Not to mention I have a great community on Discord, so if you want to join that, it would be great, and it's the best way to get updates on new videos and Twitch streams. Thank you, fellas, and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week.